Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now what I've got whizzing around in front of me is December's Soldier of Fortune, which is a promotional miniature from Warlord Games. Uh, they do one each month and it has been for, oh, this is number five. So it's quite a well-established little thing they got going. And this is Arthur Wellesley, who will one day be Lord Wellington. Uh, this is as he appeared during his campaigns in India, and he's quite a nifty little miniature. But today I want to be upfront with you. This didn't turn out quite like I had in mind. Um, and to be perfectly honest, it's a little disappointing that I missed the mark that I had in mind for myself. But all the same, I still think there's some value in showing you that, well, just because I didn't finish it the way I would have wanted, doesn't mean it's completely ugly. <laughs> there are one or two things that I would probably like to fix up if I had a little bit more time, but today's video does run a little bit longer because we are painting both the horse and the rider here. So cruise along to Warlord in December if you want to pick this fella up for yourself. They are only available during the each month that they are there. So December, Wellesley here, he'd make a pretty good pop into your Christmas cart if you happen to be doing some shopping. The recipe for the base will be in the description for this one too, as well as all of the paints. So let's get started. So first things first, once you've got your miniature assembled, we're going to go ahead and prime him. Now for this, I have used matte white from the Army Painter. Um, you can use any white here. People ask all the time, oh, can I use such and such a brand? Yes, it's white paint. <laughs> as long as the primer is going to stick to the miniature, you're probably golden. Just make sure you're giving it light coats so you don't fill in any detail. Now, as concerns the fact that I've assembled him and put the rider on the horse before painting, um, it is a rare occasion that I would do this with some of the more elaborate uniforms that are out there in the Napoleonic period. Uh, but Wellesley here and Diomed are actually going to be a lot of light colors together. So in this instance, especially because his uh, turnbacks aren't really flapping over the, the horse any, it'll be pretty simple to paint them, and I would say simpler to paint them once they're assembled. Uh, if you prefer doing them separately and then gluing them together once you are finished, go for it. You know, do it the way that you are most comfortable with, but this is not going to slow you down any, I would suggest. First off, we're going to start by painting the saddle. I want to say saddle blanket, but it's not a blanket. It is a leopard skin. And for this, I'm going to start with dark sand from Vallejo. Now this will cover really nicely over a white primer like this. Now slow down as you come to the edges of things, but don't worry too much you know, if you hit his trousers or the horse, because we can tidy that up before our next stages. Once you've got a nice solid yellow there for the base of our leopard print, we're going to start applying the spots. Now here I've got tan earth, and I've thinned this down maybe a little more than I usually would. What I'm going to do is just start splotching on some fairly random little dots. These are going to be the basis of our spotty pattern. Now once you've got some little blotches down, it's time to pop the little brown rosettes around them. Now for this, I'm going to use chocolate brown, uh, but feel free to use whatever you like the look of. And I'm going to just lightly splodge closely and try and follow some of the shape of these dots I've made. And you'll see with some of these leopard print things, the little rosettes don't completely encircle the dots. Uh, so sometimes you're going to want to just go around and then stop. And sometimes you can completely cover it. It's totally up to you. Uh, check out some leopard print leggings if you need reference. Now if you discover, as I did, that your splotches are a little bit too big, you can grab some of your dark sand, you know, the original blanket color, and just pop in the edges, make them look a little more ragged. Works quite well, I think. It's not 100% accurate, but we're looking for the impression of leopard print. Leopard skin, rather. I keep thinking leopard print. Uh, but it'll look fine on the table. What I've got now is tan yellow, and I'm going to use this as the base for basically any gold cord, yellow braid, that sort of thing. So you're going to see this color again. Uh, for now, we're just going to use it to paint in the edge of the blanket. All right, now I was thinking about painting his tack and bridle and all that now, but it occurred to me we're probably better off to start with the horse himself. So Diomed, him being white, what I'm going to do is to paint him with a coat here of ashen stone. This is an army painter, one of their speed paints. 
It's going to look pretty intense going on. So just go up to the edges of areas, and drag your brush away. Like I said, it's going to look real dark going on, <laughs> but it will chill out a bit as it dries. Now you could uh, use something like, what is it called? Apothecary white or holy white, uh, but they are a slightly more blue tint. So I would suggest, if you can get this stuff, to pick up the Ashen Stone, because it's more of a, a neutral gray. Now you'll probably see straight away that that is not as gray as it looks when it's going on, but it's definitely still way more gray than I want the horse to actually be. So I've got one of the little army painter dry brushes here. Um, I do normally recommend using makeup brushes and what have you, but since picking these up, I actually quite enjoyed using them. And the little rounded tips of them is quite handy for the way I like to sort of circularly Circularly? Yeah, dry brush. I've got some matte white on the end here, and what I'm going to do is just dry brush against uh, the areas of detail and try not to fill in the musculature that I've just added that shading to, but to make the high points of the horse a little bit more white. Now you could just paint this on, uh, but I tend to find this is relatively simple. Let's go easy. And uh, you'll very quickly lighten up this horse again. Now we've got a mostly white horse, but you'll see here at the front I have added a little bit more white just off of the brush. At this stage, you know, I'm not going to do it to the whole horse. Just some of the higher, flatter areas to make those even a little bit more pristine. And there we have a white horse. Remember, we're not looking for perfect, we are looking for simple, and I think this works quite well for the amount of work that goes into it. Now, speaking of, the horse is normally shown as having black socks, so what I have is grim black here from the Army Painter. And I'm going to paint this down about halfway up his shin. Is that the word on a horse? I don't know the first thing about horses, you see. I'm literally just copying off of, <laughs> off of what I see, so uh, the actual... Uh, equestrian terminology, it does escape me. But at least I can paint with a bit of grim black. That's nice and simple. Now once that first stage has dried thoroughly, what I've done here is added about half again, so half and half speed paint medium and that grim black. What I'm going to do is go just a little bit further up with the socky socks so you get that fade. Now, if you're worried about this uh, not looking quite right, just use way more medium and uh, you know you can go over this a couple of times to make sure that you get a solid color if you want that. But that fade, nice and quick like that, that's going to look fine. All right, now with the socks done we're going to move on to his uh, bit and bridle, all the tack that he's wearing. For this I have Ruddy Fur, it's another one of these speed paints from the Army Painter. Now I could use something like uh, Saddle Brown, for example, uh, like a, what do you call it, an acrylic. But I want to try and avoid having to shade this if I can. Uh, so what I'm going to do is quite carefully come up near the edges. Uh, recesses I'm just going to fill with this gump. It was just occurred to me what I should have done when I had the grim blackout would be to dot in his eyes, but... I'll do that before we finish. There's the tack and bridle done. Uh, what I'm going to do now is pop on a little bit of peachy flesh onto his muzzle. Now, I've seen this also done in gray. Um, again, if you know which portrait it is that the artists are taking inspiration from, I'd love to know. Because uh, I could not find... Like, all I found was miniatures. Now, I've thinned this down. This is three dots of peachy flesh to one dot of the speed paint medium. I don't want it to be very strong. But we're just going to coat over his muzzle like a so. Now the last thing I'm going to do, and I think this will finish off the horse, is I have got here two dots of speed paint medium and three dots of ashen stone, which we used for his fur, or his pelt rather. And I'm going to paint this over his mane again, just to give that a little bit more shading and dull down some of the white. Now, until we get to painting the little metallic bits, uh, that is the horse done, or at least the base coat's on him done, because we are going to touch up 
the blanket, for example, the leopard skin rather. Uh, but we're going to swap up now. We're finally going to start with Wellesley himself. Now what I have here, this is Cadian Flesh Tone, and we're just going to paint in his face. Don't worry too much if you do splash over his hair or his collar. And you'll see that this covers very nicely over a white primer, but you will probably still get some of the uh, primer showing through. Gosh, it's a little difficult to keep him in shot here. Uh, but yeah, once you've satisfied with the finish there, we can move on. And now at last, that iconic red coat. I'm using here flat red from Vallejo. I'm also going to violently batter my camera while I do it. So this will cover very well. It's a nice bright red. But we are going to tone it down a little bit when we shade this. So take your time. Try and avoid like his turnbacks and what have you. But don't worry too much. All we really want to avoid is bits that we have already painted. Now you will want to come back and give that a second coat in some places, but that's quite nice. I do like that. What I'm going to use now is brown sand. Now I'm going to use this in three places. First of all, on his gloves. I'm also going to use it as the color for the cover of his spyglass. And I'm also going to paint his turnbacks, or the cuffs rather, on his boots in this color. Now you may want to look at a couple of different leather colors for these different areas if you fancy. Um, but I figure they're, they're far enough away from one another. It won't really matter all that much. And it saves having to look up three different, <laughs> three different leather colors. Now something else I've done is to very quickly get in the uh, stripes and what have you on his uniform that are going to be yellow later. And I've painted them in with a little bit of that brown sand. With Prussian blue, I'm going to paint in his collar and his cuffs. Very carefully. Uh, now I've looked at a few different portraits of Wellesley in his Major General's uniform. Uh, and it looks like the, the collar up here is mostly completely blue. So um, I'm going to do that off camera because it'll be a little easier for me to reach. All right, now the sash around his waist. Now uh, we're going to use red. This is literally just called red from Vallejo. It's really more of a nice, almost burgundy kind of color. And uh, it's going to work perfectly for the sash. So just a quick coat of this should do the trick. Now for his boots and his scabbard, I'm actually going to use black. And I ordinarily warn off about using a flat black. I'd normally suggest something like German gray or a you know, very dark bluish gray. But in this instance, I think the really high contrast, that slightly unrealistic look, is going to work in our favor. So if you do want an alternative, then German Grey would be what I would go for here ordinarily. Uh, but today, let's try going a little bit darker. Now I'm going to turn to Retributor Armor, and we're going to paint a few details in with this. Uh, basically anything which is going to be either gold or kind of brassy, I'm going to coat with this. So the handle on his sword. Now strictly speaking, his spyglass would probably have been a more brassy color, or probably had a, a cover even. But I like Retributor Armor. I like the brassy color that it is, so that's how I'm painting it. And now some of the bits that I was going to paint in that tan yellow, if you remember me mentioning, instead I'm going to spring here for Liberator Gold. Now, this is a little bit tricky on the camera, but uh, take your time, and remember that you can tidy up with the red or the white if you still need to. Now before I forget, I'm going to tip him up a little bit so I can see properly, and I'm going to use some chocolate brown on his hair. Now for his hat, it's really very pale, so I am going to use pale sand. Now this will cover quite well over white, and uh, don't worry too much if it's not a completely perfect first coat. All right, now the last couple of details that I'm going to do are going to be very quick off screen. I'm going to use Iron Hand Steel to paint in all the little metal bits on his uh, bridle, his stirrups and what have you. It's not actually all that much, it's just a bit fussy. And then the last thing I'm going to do is go back to that matte white and tidy up things like his cravat and his trousers, anywhere that I've splashed that I want to be pure white. Now what I'm going to do is to mix up my shade mix. What I'm going to do is use one, two, three, 
four drops of Dark Tone. Now in the skin set, and one that has been announced is going to be in the new range from Warpaints Fanatic, is a strong skin tone. So I'm going to try this. One, two, three, four dots of that. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dots of Speed Paint Medium. Now, more of this simply because the the drops basically come out of the bottle a little bit quicker, so <laughs> you're never sure if you're going to get quite the same amount as you would with the other bottles. But I want it to be thinner anyhow, and I'm using Speed Paint Medium because this flows much more readily and smoothly than Quick Shade Medium does. Now I like the Quick Shade Medium, but for this application, I want the flow. All right, now I've got my dangerous little mix all set up. I've got a nice big brush. I'm going to apply this over all of Wellesley and his saddle. Now I'm going to try and avoid the horse as much as possible, but otherwise I want to give everything a nice coat of this to give me some shading. Now working it into all of the recesses, and you'll see it flows with that uh, speed paint medium. It flows a little bit more smoothly than it would straight from the bottle. So we'll come back once I've got this over everything and it has dried. Give it about half an hour to do that. Now, once that's dried, that has turned out to be darker than I would have liked. Um, particularly the strong skin shade wasn't quite as warm as my usual mix, which features a Reichland flesh shade. So it's quite dark, um, and it is a, a brownish tint in the recesses rather than that brownie red that I normally go for. So I will link to the video where I make up the marine juice in other ways. Um, this is not bad though. It's not what I was planning for, but we can keep going. Uh, just bear in mind, I would probably suggest doing it slightly differently. What I am going to do is go back to that matte white again, and we can just highlight a few bits. Uh, I don't want to completely cover over his trousers, for example, but his turnbacks, and if we just do a little bit of white to get some of the shape and highlighting back to his trousers, I think they'll look much smarter. As well as these, I'm also going to highlight the uh, hat band and these little bits on his cravat. Now, weirdly, that actually looks a little rougher on camera than it does in person, I swear. Now, highlighting red is a tricky one because you want to brighten it up, but you don't want it to turn orange. But for now, what I have is vermilion, and I am going to go over some of the, basically the flat areas of the jacket. Um, I want to leave the shaded red in the recesses. You'll see this is much brighter and uh, looks a little bit more suitable, shall we say. Oh gosh, if I can get it in shot. There we go. So yeah, anywhere that I can reach with the brush, I'm going to carefully put in a little bit of vermilion now. Now, to mix up the color that I want to use to highlight the jacket, now what I'm going to use here, this is Basic Skin Tone from Vallejo. I'm just getting a little bit of it from this dollop here on my palette, putting it into my brush, and I'm going to start mixing into some vermilion from earlier. And when it comes to mixing uh, like red into stuff, try not to use white, because uh, you'll find that what you end up with is pink, whereas something like a skin tone uh, will give you a slightly more subtle transition. As you see, I'm just going back and forth, mixing a middle ground that I like the look of there, and... Uh, yeah, I think that'll do. That'll work for our highlight. And now just a little bit of that on the end of my brush. And let's see about getting right at the edges and creases of the jacket. Now I don't want very much of this this time. Just enough to accentuate some of the higher folds. Give it a bit more shape there. Now a little bit of fresh pale sand. Lighten up the hat again because I don't quite like the dark that that's gone to. Now his face being so far under his hat there actually makes it a little bit tricky to show you what I've got in mind for painting his face. So what I'm going to do instead is link in the description. There is a video where I've already done how I'm going to do this one, and it'll make for a much more interesting viewing than me very gently trying to dot in here. Now somewhere under there is my handsome boy. <laughs> it's so hard to get him on camera. Just the shape of the miniature makes him, I'm really worried about how I'm going to get photos of him. 
Anyhow, what I have now is cork brown, and we're going to highlight the leather with this. Just a little bit of this at the edges to give it a bit more shape. And this will look particularly good on the backs of his knuckles. Now I am going to dot just a little bit more Liberator Gold onto the little buttons in the center of each of these stripes. I've mixed up here half and half. This is Azure and our Prussian Blue from earlier. And well, there's only one blue detail <laughs> to highlight with this. Uh, conveniently, it also makes a really good cleanup stage if you have managed to bap his uh, cuffs or his collar with something. Now the very, very final thing I'm going to do, I have one of my little tiny cheap dry brushes here. The size is important, I want small. And I've got some pale sand in here. What I'm going to do is just lightly flick on the edges of the uh, braiding or tassels, whatever you call them, on the edge of his... I keep wanting to call it the blanket. Now, it's important to point out, this is a wonderful miniature. You could really spend some time on it. And uh, I think some of the examples that you'll see online are just stunning. But, um, yeah, I'm happy with finished. And I think good enough, sometimes we need to remind ourselves, is good enough. So once I'm satisfied that I've got this done, uh, what I'm going to do is take him outside, hit him with a matte varnish, and I am going to base him. And I'll pop the recipe for that in the description too. It's nice and simple. Once that's all finished, take some photos, and let's get a look at what he looks like when he is all done. And so there at last, our man Wellesley is complete. And like I said at the beginning, he isn't really quite what I had in mind when I set out. And I think there's an important lesson there. First of all, don't experiment when you're painting a character. <laughs> I should have stuck to the shade mix that I knew, rather than trying something different just for the sake of it. Um, it would have quite significantly changed the outcome, I think. The second part of that really is that, well, it's not what I wanted, but it's all right. It's not a disaster. And just because it isn't what I had in mind, you know, I was trying to quite closely follow what the, uh, the Warlord Games example looked like, doesn't mean that it's awful just for having missed that mark. It's maybe not as nice as I would ordinarily like to have done something like this, but I'm happy to have him finished, and he will quite happily join in with anything that needs an intelligence officer or something of that like. Um, the spyglass in particular, I think, is a cool look. You don't often see officers who aren't either sitting there looking all prim and proper, or with a sword in the air going, ah. So I like this figure, it's really cool. So as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. You folks are the ones who really keep me going. I really appreciate it. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time. I know it's been a long one today. <laughs> and you all enjoy the rest of your day.